following the rules, or questioning them. What's the best way to achieve success? For many years, I believed with all my heart that I can achieve success only by following the rules. However, something happened that changed the way I see success and the search for excellence. I discovered in my research a unique mindset for success that I'm going to share with you today. It can be used by anyone. And this is how my story starts. After moving from Israel to America, in almost every other meeting, people asked us the same question. What's the secret to the success of so many Israeli-based startup companies? I never really knew the answer, so I would always just reply, it's the Hamas. <laughs> now, Israel is a small country. I think there are some zip codes here that are larger than Israel. Its size is only 5% of the size of California, yet it is known as the startup nation and has the third most companies listed on the Nasdaq after the US and China. Now, I'm a researcher and author. I study the connection between audacity and success. And for over three years, I've been researching together with my partner, hundreds of successful Israeli entrepreneurs. In our research, we wanted to discover the powerful mindset that makes Israeli entrepreneurs so innovative. We looked for a pattern that others can learn and use. Also, we had a feeling that this way of thinking might exist in other countries. So we expanded our study to include more successful entrepreneurs globally. And it was interesting. As we analyzed the data, we discovered that many successful global entrepreneurs have the same mindset as Israeli ones. Now, my passion is to share this unique mindset with people from all over the world. We all want to be successful, right? So let's see what we can learn from these role models. In our research, we discovered three main patterns that these entrepreneurs had in common. The first is challenging the status quo. These successful entrepreneurs are independent thinkers who rely on their guts and intuition. They are not afraid to ask questions such as, why does it have to be this way? Why can't we do it differently? And no matter where they come from, they use two magic words. What if? What if cars could see like people? A question that led to an automated collision avoidance system that saves lives. I guess it helps that cars aren't busy texting. <laughs> what if paralyzed people could walk again? A question that led to the development of a robotic walking system enabling paralyzed people to actually walk again. Now, these entrepreneurs not only challenge the status quo, but they reinvent the game and reshape our reality. That's the second part of re-identified, reinventing the game. Successful entrepreneurs reinvent the game by looking at the bigger picture and connecting the dots that seem to be unrelated. It's almost as if they ignore the mental boundaries that limit others. When it comes to the bigger picture, the founders of Waze, for example, connected the big picture of GPS maps with the real-time input from drivers like us, completely changing the navigation world. And when it comes to ingenuity, I like to say, where well, there's a will, there's a ways. <laughs> One of my favorite examples of reinventing the game is Watergen. This company developed an advanced technology to extract fresh drinking water directly from the air, a solution that creates magic for people who live in areas without fresh water. Air into water? What's next? Wine? <laughs> and what about this? Just recently, Israeli scientists presented a new way to generate energy from bacteria. Now, 
On top of reinventing the game, these entrepreneurs have the determination to do whatever it takes to turn their passion into action. That's the third pattern we found in our research, doing whatever it takes. You know this thing when you have a great idea, but you don't follow it all the way through? Maybe you started your journey, but you ran into fear or criticism, and eventually you decided to give up. It happens to all of us, right? Well, it doesn't have to be that way. You see, these entrepreneurs respond differently. They'll do whatever it takes. They have a burning passion that drives them to break all mental and physical limits and move forward fearlessly with what seems like superpowers. Dr. Gabi Dan is a scientist who had an idea to develop a camera that would fit into a small capsule taken by mouth and send images from within the body. People told him, hmm, no way, it won't work, it's impossible. Who do you think you are, Tom Cruise? <laughs> but Dr. Idan challenged the status quo, connected the dots, and had the passion and determination to do whatever it takes. Today, his invention helps detect intestinal diseases, improving the quality of life for millions across the world. I had a conversation recently with an amazing woman, Debbie El Natan. Debbie was told by the doctors that her son Rotem has cerebral palsy and would never be able to walk. She had a hard time accepting this. As a musician, she believed that practice can make a difference. And as a mother, she wanted to give her son a sense of independence. So she started tying her son's lower body to hers in an attempt for them to walk together. But this was too hard. There must be a better way to walk together, she said to herself. And out of her deep frustration that her son wouldn't be able to experience the world upright, she came up with a fantastic invention. It took her 18 years of rejection before she launched APSI. Today, APSI helps disabled children from more than 100 countries to stand, walk, and even kick a ball for the first time in their life. Now, when we completed our research, we were wondering what's the best way to define this success mindset? Challenging the status quo, reinventing the game, doing whatever it takes. Considering these three patterns, my research partner, Gil, announced, Nearly? I know what they have in common. These entrepreneurs have chutzpah. <laughs> now, chutzpah is not the name of one of Cinderella's sisters. <laughs> As you know, when we use chutzpah in everyday conversation, we usually mean guts or nerve. It's the willingness to break convention and to try new things. And it's even more profound than that. It's a way of thinking that is so powerful and full of energy and there is nothing stopping you from doing whatever you want. So Gil felt that chutzpah is the secret behind the success mindset. And not the hummus, after all. <laughs> but I, I was against it. Because sometimes people use chutzpah aggressively in a negative way to advance themselves over others. Also, it made me think about myself. You see, most of my life, I was, I was more about chasing perfection and playing it safe. So I resented everything that had to do with chutzpah. Hmm, don't get me wrong. As a lawyer, I was a high achiever for sure. But you know that feeling when you prefer to take the safe path to success and win the game, instead of taking a risk and reinventing the game? That was me. So Gil and I were discussing. Well, actually, we were fighting. <laughs> but it sounds better to say we were discussing. Gil insisted they have chutzpah, and I replied, no, it's not chutzpah. And after going back and forth, I said, wait a minute. But what if we are missing something? 
What if there's, if there's another piece to this puzzle, something that is deeper than just the conventional chutzpah? Now, until that point, we were analyzing the thinking patterns of these entrepreneurs and their mindset. But our breakthrough happened when we moved from studying what goes in their minds to understanding what goes in their hearts. It was the intention behind the invention. So this is what we found in our research. Behind what seemed like a bold chutzpah mindset, many times there was a more generous intention, a desire to make the world a better place, a kind of audacity with soul. It dares to challenge the status quo, but with empathy, compassion, grace, and the intention for a higher purpose, to add value, to solve problems, and improve the world. That was an aha moment for me, because I realized the positive power of chutzpah when we use it for a higher purpose. Also, I realized that audacity with soul has been a part of me for life, for years. You see, 14 years ago, I decided to quit my job as a defense attorney for over a decade. I wanted to help people to follow their aspirations, so I reinvented the game of my life. Back to the research. So Gil and I decided to coin this mindset, positive chutzpah. Now, all the stories that I shared with you today are examples of Israeli entrepreneurs. We have a lot of them because chutzpah is a central part of our culture and has been for many years. In Israel, we like to question assumptions, debate, and we love challenges. It's part of our culture. However, the more we research positive chutzpah, the more we see that it's universal. It's beyond any boundaries of culture, gender, or profession, and anyone can learn it and adopt it. Anyone. We meet successful entrepreneurs from all over the world who have the same mindset, even though they don't call it positive chutzpah. We work with people from different cultures, and sometimes they tell us that learning the mindset of positive chutzpah is easier than pronouncing the word chutzpah. <laughs> Today, when the world is more connected than ever before, we are all part of a great human chain. So a breakthrough by one of us is a breakthrough for all. And when you reinvent the game using positive chutzpah, not only you impact the world positively, but you encourage others to push boundaries as well. It's almost like the universe is expanding to include more possibilities. And many times, positive chutzpah invites us to face some of our deepest fears the fear of change, the fear of failure, the fear of the unknown. And sometimes, the more you're afraid, the more you need positive chutzpah. And I'm not just talking about the big ideas that can save the world, but also the small thoughts popping up in our minds. Maybe you have a good idea for a new business, but you are afraid to take the risk and do whatever it takes. Perhaps you have an idea to solve a problem that is beyond your expertise, but you dismiss it immediately. You see, positive chutzpah is about being our best version, beyond any fears or limits. And it's worth it. According to research by psychologist Tom Gilovich from Cornell University and Shai Davidai, people are haunted more by regrets about failing to fulfill their aspirations than regrets about failing to fulfill their obligations. So before I leave the stage, let me leave you with this. Positive chutzpah is a mindset for everyone and can be used everywhere. It might be the time for us to consider a new balance between chasing perfection and playing by the book and using some positive chutzpah to succeed in a dynamic world. Now, when people ask me, what's the first step to owning positive chutzpah, I always respond, 
it's embracing the idea that you can achieve success not only by following the rules, but also by questioning them and asking, what if? Now for me, being on this stage, right here, right now, telling you all this is my positive chutzpah. What about you? <laughs>